check it. <clears throat> All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 25th District Teams Virtual District Night. Uh, we wish that we could be with each of you in person in the district or Annapolis, but in the interest of safety and time, we thought it best to go ahead and proceed with plans to have a virtual event. And we're so glad each of you were able to join us. I have to tell you, we have a very in information packed evening in store for you. And if you all didn't know it, I have the honor of serving with an incredibly talented and dynamic team here in Annapolis. Could not be prouder of the members of the 25th district team that I have the honor of serving with. And we're gonna hear from each of them in just a moment, but I would be remiss if I went any further without first, because of who I am, I wanna give honor to God and just say thank you to him for allowing all of us to be here safely. And just for allowing me the honor of, of serving in Annapolis with three of the hardest working people in the state of Maryland. You're gonna hear from them shortly, but the first is the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus for the entire state of Maryland, has more members than any caucus chair in the history of the state and has served longer than any Black caucus chair in the state's history, I believe. And that is our very own Delegate Daryl Barnes, chair of the Black caucus. Give him a Zoom shout, clap. Let's make some noise, everybody. Let's <laughs> make some noise. Yeah. And, yep. there and we're going to go. listen. There you I go. am excited to be here this evening. Um, I think uh, Senator Griffith has said it best that we have an awesome team. I tell you what, if you all don't know how fortunate we are to have Senator Griffith as our Senate the second in charge in the Senate. We have the dynamic Nate Charles as the uh, uh, delegation chair. We have the newbie, which is new to us, but not new to you all, and Karen Toes. Listen, I am excited. If you all aren't excited about the night, I don't know what's gonna get everybody fired up, but listen, we are rocking and rolling in Annapolis right now. We are kicking some behinds, we're taking names, and uh, we are making you all proud. I hope we're making you all proud because we are working extremely hard and doing some wonderful things. And uh, I can't wait to have this discussion. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and what we're gonna do, I want certainly really wanted to have each of our, our members of the 25th team give you greetings. And then we're going to introduce some other special guests. I'm going to go over the plans for this evening. And then each, you're going to hear from each of us on what we're working on in Annapolis. And then we're going to open it up to some others to give remarks. But first, to give his opening greetings. He's only been, this is his fourth year in Annapolis. He hit the ground running, managed to secure the votes of the 23 members of the Prince George's House delegation and is now serving as their chair in his first term as chair of the delegation in his first four year term in Annapolis, the dynamic and energetic delegate, Nick Charles. Yes, yes, yes. Get Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Man, I, I, I got I got Senator Griffith, you know, starting off with the level of excitement. I got Delegate Barnes following up with the excitement. So I got to keep it going. You know, it's District 25 night. And this is uh, what the third year, uh, fourth year that we've done this. And this is, uh, I know, it, you know, this is, it's an amazing time, you know, to get a lot of you guys out to see what's going on in Annapolis and to hear what we got going on. You know, listen, it's been a pleasure to represent all of you all. And over these last four years, I've been able to develop some even stronger relationships with a lot of you that's on this call today. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be serving with a strong team like Senator Griffith. Like Daryl said, we, we have a phenomenal team. We got a Senator who's number two in the entire state of Maryland. We got the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. And on top of that, we got a former two-term councilwoman as our delegate. You know, I don't see any team out there that is as strong or works as hard as we do. So I wanna thank everybody for being here with us tonight because you didn't have to be here. You know how good that weather feels outside. I feel like we should be outside doing this daggone meeting right now. But uh, we're going to enjoy it from the insides for the day. And I'd like to thank you all for showing up tonight. 
Thank you, Delegate Charles. And last but not least, giving opening greetings, you just heard from our delegates, we have been joined by a phenomenal county, well-respected leader. She's worked on behalf of our community and elected office for eight years, and she didn't stop working when she left the county council. She's been working on behalf of community, communities and citizens across the 25th district in the state of Maryland. She's already hit the ground running in Annapolis, building relationships and making a strong and positive name for herself. She has really been a part of the District 25 team for years, but is in her first District 25 night with us as an official delegate. Give a warm welcome to the freshman delegate for District 25, Delegate Karen Toll. Yay! Yay! Hey. Oh, it's a little clown. Hello, welcome. Hello, everybody. It's so exciting to be here. Yeah, I used to just come for the food, food when I uh, was a council member. Uh, I used to just try to get up here just to come and shake the food, the food. But um, now I'm, I'm, I'm kidding about that. But it is so great to be here my first time. Um, this District 25 night as a delegate. And my colleagues on the House side have already said how dynamic um, Senator Melanie Griffith is. Let me tell you, I walk these halls in the House and they like, you got a bad, you know what, Senator over there. I'm like, I know that's how we roll. And so it is good to just walk into, you know, the General Assembly with the amount of respect that we have. Chair Daryl Barnes, you all, he runs a tight meeting on Black Caucus. He keeps us all straight, all together. Um, I, I had to pull him in with some work I was doing with judiciary and uh, everybody was like, let's get Daryl Barnes. He's our chair of Black Caucus. So you'll hear more about that later. Of course, our chair of delegation. You know, we live on the other side of two five, uh, you know, um, delegate chairman Nick Charles. He is my neighbor next door. You all, I keep tabs on him, see what he's doing. Um, but he 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 has my back. He comes over, we chit chat, he asks me how I'm doing. You know, it's just been a phenomenal time, a phenomenal team. I am just so excited. And, you know, Delegate Nick Charles gave me a little bit of an assignment as a delegation chair. And I, I think I handled it pretty well. I mean, we are just out here working and I kid you not everyone, people come up to me up here and while they congratulate me for being here, they talk about what a dynamic team District 25 is. So to the constituents out there that are listening, we are rocking and rolling up here and our colleagues um, are telling us that as well. So it is great to be respected. Um, and I look forward to just telling you more about what I'm doing later. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you, Delegate Tolls. I want to join with the rest of my colleagues, thanking you all so much for being here. As they said, it's a beautiful day outside. I will tell um, first, we want to acknowledge, and let me just say that everybody who's a part of this Zoom and everybody who is a part of the work that we're trying to do is highly valued by this team. We are not limited to celebrating people who have titles or offices because we understand that it takes all of us to get the work done that we must have done in order to move our community forward. We do want to acknowledge that we have the presence of a few of our colleagues in elected office that have joined us and others will jump on later. But we want to acknowledge the presence of Council Member Rodney Streeter representing District 7. We also see um, Commissioner Harriet Irving from the city of District Heights. We see one of our very own uh, 25th District Democratic Central Committee members, Dr. Rhonda Wallace is on the Zoom. Uh, former Senator Dr. Beatrice T. Oh, thank you. On the Zoom. <laughs> I see former Senator Gloria Lala, whose name is in the Zoom. I believe she's joined us this evening. I see uh, Mr. Ron Young, who works in the office of our county executive on the Zoom. And if I've missed others, I know my colleagues will help me bring them in when each of them gets to the point where we are able to give our remarks. But we just want to thank each and every one of you for being here. 
our plan is that we will get updates from each of the, uh, from me, and then each of the delegates will tell you a little bit about what we're doing with our community, our committees of assignment and the work that's happening in our respective areas of responsibility. We certainly want to give time for our Democratic Central Committee, um, but we're going to hear from uh, our Democratic Central Committee members. We have some other elected officials that will join us, and we, we hope to have time to have them gr give greetings. We do have candidates for elected office that will be uh, joining us on the Zoom, and this, this will not be able to be a... Um, a candidates forum. We just are not going to have the time to accommodate all of our candidates, but we'll ask um, Chairman Barnes if he can keep track of, of the candidates that come on the Zoom. And perhaps as we get closer to the end of our time together, we'll ask him to give shout outs for those of you that have shared your evening with us. Uh, we also have some community and civic leaders have, who have joined us on the Zoom and certainly want to hear from you all if you have anything that the team needs to be aware of as we continue our work here in Annapolis. Uh, we see some of our community leaders, some of you are regular long time coming to 25 night and others you may be joining us for the first time, but we certainly want to acknowledge and hear from all of you. So even though I felt like I've talked a lot, I am first on the agenda to give an update. If there are no questions at this point, then I'll proceed and I'll trust that my colleagues, if I've forgotten something, will, will jump in uh, when they get the mic and help me pick up where I've left off. I do want to introduce you all to, if you have not met, the phenomenal team that I have working with me in Annapolis and back in the county. I affectionately call them Team 220, and secretly, each of them has a superhero name, but I won't share those with you. <laughs> I just want you to introduce, and I'll ask them to wave as I, as I introduce them. My Chief of Staff, Letitia Beal, uh, Special Assistant, Karen White. My legislative aide, Najee Bailey, who I believe is somewhere. I don't see him on my screen. You might have turned to your second or third page because we have a lot of folks on the Zoom. Um, I also have, a, you all know my, oh, I just saw Najee. Yeah, he was on my page too. I also have a community liaison, Sharma Jack Rousseau, who many of you have met. And then I will introduce working with my campaign. I have Frankie G who's on the Zoom and Jarrell Johnson who's on the Zoom. So I have a, a, a big team filling up some of the Zoom room tonight, and I just want to thank them all for being here and for their support. If not for them, I would not be able to do the work that I do. So that being said, um, I have the honor of serving, as my colleagues mentioned, as President Pro Tem of the Maryland Senate. That means when President Ferguson is unavailable or unable to serve and lead the chamber, I, I am able to do that. I actually opened the session today and led the Senate in its opening session. Um, in addition to that, I serve on the Budget and Tax Committee, as well as several subcommittees and other special work groups and uh, assignments. And I'll talk a little bit about- No, he's coming. Um, so basically, a great deal of our work in Annapolis is spent working on our standing committees. And then some of us in our standing committees have subcommittee assignments. So I serve on the budget and tax committee and we're responsible for adopting the state's operating budget. So the governor introduced a $58 billion budget and we go through that budget line by line, ensuring that it reconciles with the needs of not just the 25th district or Prince George's County, but the state of Maryland. We work very closely with our colleagues in federal government. We work closely with our colleagues in county government. We're in regular communications with our colleagues in municipal government, and we work with civic and community leaders on areas of interest that are covered by the state's budget. I serve and chair the, the subcommittee on health and human services. And today the budget actually was read in the, uh, the Senate's chamber. So what, what the process is, is the governor introduces a budget. We go through it line by line. And until next January, you all may, may remember last November, you passed a constitutional amendment on the ballot that will give members of the General Assembly more ability to take actions as it pertains to the governor's budget. But this year, 
we are limited in terms of where we can move money or add money to the governor's budget. We're not able to officially do that in the operating budget. We do have the ability to take more action in the capital budget. But next year, because of your votes at the election polls, we will have more of a role in shaping the state's budget. Just to tell you a little bit about what the budget did this year, the budget that the Senate Budget and Tax Committee adopted that is being read in the, the Senate chamber this week, we uh, secured structural balance. We're required by law to make sure that the budget is structurally balanced. Many of you may have heard there's, uh, we have done very well as a state with revenue this year. Um, a lot of it is because we got an influx of support from our colleagues at the federal government. Um, but we are in the process of reserving funds to provide some kind of tax relief. What that looks like, we haven't decided. Chair Barnes will probably know before I do, and others, uh, Chair Charles, those that are on the Ways and Means Committee may have a better idea uh, than I do at this time what the actions are going to look like in terms of tax relief. Um, we will be working to make sure that legislative priorities are reflected in the budget. So basically, because there's a surplus, what we did on the Senate side is we did what we call fenced some money. We fenced off some money. What we said to the governor is, you didn't spend this pot of money. So if we were to decide how it's spent, these are the priorities that we would like to see the money spent on. Um, so we picked some things that we thought our voters would be most concerned about. We, in addition to what the governor, the governor already and what the budget already provides for late aid to local government, money for our local health departments, money for our school system through the blueprint for Maryland's future, as well as traditional education funding. We provided funding for public safety um, to make sure that our communities are getting the resources they need to produce some economic development. And economic development is an area that the 25th district team, each of the members is keenly focused on economic development. We also, and I should have mentioned this earlier, we were honored to have one of our very own, Delegate Derek Davis, former delegate, elected to the Office of Treasurer. And so we will work with him very closely on items that are put in the budget that go through the Board of Public Works. So know that a great deal of my time is spent on making sure that the budget reflects the needs of our seniors, our youth, our families, our vulnerable, and those who would like to create jobs in Prince George's County in the state of Maryland. In terms of personal legislation that I've introduced, my focus this session has largely been around creating jobs and making sure there's a level playing field for those who have businesses in the state of Maryland. So along again with my colleagues, and we share these priorities, I've put several, introduce several bills that deal with minority business, as has Delegate Barnes, Delegate Charles, and we're supported by the de new delegate tolls. Um, I've put in legislation to impact the procurement process in the state of Maryland. We know that sometimes the rules can create barriers to um, us being able to compete for those resources that are providing the services that our community needs. So we wanna make sure that our businesses are able to do some of the work that the state is paying for in Prince George's County and the state of Maryland. Um, so that right there is the bells indicating that I need to step in for a vote. So what I'm gonna do is ask Chairman Barnes if he will take over the Zoom. I'm gonna go off camera and be back when I can. Thank you all so much, I apologize. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> Listen, I think uh, uh, Senator gave us a, a, a lot to chew on. And I think uh, before I, I start, I want to recognize that we have uh, Co Congressman Anthony Brown on the call. So thank you for being here uh, this evening as well. And uh, former District 25 alum. So we, we appreciate you. Listen, as the Senator said, we are uh, working extremely hard right now uh, there is so much going on, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Maryland Legislative Black Caucus Chairman, meaning we are the largest Black Caucus in the union. We have 61 members, 
Um, when you talk about the work, uh, my job is to manage and temper the expectations and egos of 61 members uh, and wanting to change the world overnight. And when you talk about bills, I have bills from every member uh, because I, my job is to help them get their bills across the finish line. Uh, but I think there are some important things that's happening right now. And I think the number one focus for us is should we legalize marijuana here in the state of Maryland? And that will be a referendum on the ballot come November. And I'm sure Delegate Tolls will be able to elaborate more on that since that bill is coming out of judiciary. But let me just tell you that that is something that we are looking at very closely, especially from a social justice impact and rewriting the wrongs of those that have been incarcerated for low levels of marijuana in the past and making sure that we move forward and not repeating the same mistakes that we made when we legalized medical cannabis a couple of years ago. Uh, you talk about a multi-billion dollar industry in uh, cannabis. I mean, we want to make sure that we get it right, similar to when we legalized uh, sports betting here in the state of Maryland, another multi-million dollar or billion dollar industry that now has some of the most robust language in the country when we talk about uh, minority participation and ensuring that African-Americans get an opportunity to participate in this industry. But I'm not going to uh, monopolize the time. I want to give my colleagues uh, enough time to share their thoughts on some of the things they're working with, especially Delegate Charles being the chairman of our delegation, uh, because he has more insight on what we're doing locally as it relates to the things that impact Prince George's more closely. Uh, so Delegate Charles, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we've had, it's been a lot going on in Annapolis this year. And uh, it's been, like I said, a pleasure serving, serving not only District 25, but all of Prince George's County as the chair of the uh, Prince George's County House delegation. I wanna uh, take some time to introduce, I see uh, Commissioner Katrina Dixon Patterson from the Individuals with Disability Commission. I see our clerk of the courts, Mahasan. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, see Sherma Brousseau, I think you've already been called out, Sherma. All right, but yeah, so I'll, I'll get back to, to the bills. It's been a lot going on this uh, this past session. You know, I, I think I, I put a whole lot of bills in. I did uh, 11 bills of my own plus 46 that I co-sponsored and still trying to get the 15 delegation bills all out. So yeah, I think I, I took on a whole lot, but, but that's what we do in District 25. And so, and within the delegation, uh, two of the most important bills right now are three that I'll discuss from a delegation perspective, uh, which I know it's been on a, a lot of people's minds. And uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Mayor. We have the mayor of uh, District Heights, uh, Jonathan Medlock, who just joined us as well. Uh, but we have uh, a bill that just got voted out of Ways and Means today uh, in terms of our school board. We know that's been a topic of discussion for some time now, and what do we plan to do? And so one of the things that came out of our uh, delegation is we have etched it in stone that we are going back to an all elected school board. We have also etched it in stone that uh, as soon as December, the school board members will be selecting their own chair and vice chair. But in terms of how we go to an all elected board, there's gonna be a study that is done to make sure that we don't uh, miss anything. There's been some concerns on the Senate side uh, between the House side, and we could not get everything all on one accord. So we had to, uh, to appease everyone and make sure that we get this thing right we've moved forward with a study. So the bill made it out of our delegation uh, with no issues and made it out of ways and means with no issues. And uh, hopefully it makes it out of the Senate with no problems whatsoever, uh, with no issues or concerns. Uh, we had another bill uh, and for a lot of the folks who, who live in the inner beltway community, uh, you guys know that we have this over proliferation of liquor stores that plagues our community uh, just far for far too long it's been going on. And so we have legislation that uh, just made it out of ECM, 
uh, and it'll be coming to the floor, uh, hopefully tomorrow or sometime this week, uh, which will allow for uh, liquor license holders to be able to take their liquor license and move to a different location uh, where there isn't an over proliferation of liquor stores. And hopefully what that does for our community is, is clear up a lot of the blight that we see, a lot of the issues that we see uh, in terms of driving down the street and seeing liquor stores on every single corner in our communities. Because aren't y'all tired of seeing that? I know, I know I'm tired of seeing it. So that's something that we're focusing in on. Thank you. Uh, and uh, something else that came out of the Ways and Means Committee that I think all of us could be happy for. Uh, right now, you know, this gas tax, this, the gas is killing us at the pump right now. Four dollars, almost five dollars to fill up your tank. Uh, we in the Ways and Means Committee, uh, we just voted this out. Uh, and we have uh, suspended the gas tank, the gas tax for a month, and that's been a collaboration with the Senate, the House, and the governor, uh, but we got it out of our committee, uh, 37 cents off of every uh, gallon, uh, so be on the lookout for that. You know, it's tough times right now, and so these are some of the things that we're doing to try to make sure that we take care of the citizens back home. Uh, we've also taken care of eliminating certain taxes. Uh, you know, having children and raising children is hard and very expensive. So we have eliminated the tax on diapers. We've also eliminated the tax on oral hygiene and oral health. And we also eliminated tax on diabetes care. Uh, so these are things that probably should have never been taxed, but this is something that our community, our body has worked together to make sure that we're looking out for everyday citizens. And that's all of us that's on this call. And also car seats and baby bottles, no more taxes on those particular items as well. Uh, another thing before I go, uh, I do want to at least talk about uh, and give thanks to uh, Jana Parker. I see she's on here, but I would like to thank her uh, for helping out tremendously with pulling together a lot of the advocates so that we can push the governor to, re to make sure he funds this $140 million towards our schools for the current commission. You know, that was a big issue and a big deal uh, where the governor, uh, chose not to fully fund the Kerwin uh, Commission. And you all know, like right now, we are paying for our schools off of the backs of a lot of our, uh, the property owners. And so we don't have a strong commercial tax base just yet within Prince George's County, and we're going to get there. But in the meantime, we have to make sure there's equitable distribution of resources to pay for our schools, to create the entire uh, process of wraparound services within our schools and make sure our kids have access to everything that they need. And so with the push of the community, of the Senate, of the House, we were able to get uh, the $140 million added to the supplemental budget uh, to get Kerwin fully funded. And so it's a lot going on. It's a lot of work going on in Annapolis. And I just like to thank you all for working with us and giving us your opinions and letting us know where if we're doing the right thing, if we're not doing the right thing, we truly appreciate that because that's what it takes in order to make sure that we bring home everything that we're supposed to for Prince George's County and for District 25. So thank you all. I see the Senator is back. Uh, before I, I let her go ahead and uh, close us out, uh, Delegate Tolls. Good evening, everyone. Again, I want to thank you all for, for being here. Um, it is so much that I'm doing. Uh, I'm a joke with my colleagues and say they don't have long um, judiciary or committee hearings as I do, but I know they work um, twice as hard because they've been here longer and understand the ropes. Um, and so I'm just look delighted uh, to be here. It is just amazing listening to the conversations in judiciary. Um, and I just want to, you know, back up and tell you that I am a member of the Judiciary Committee when I was sworn in, appointed by our wonderful speaker, um, Adrian Jones. And from that, the chair of the um, Judiciary, Luke Klimpacher, appointed me to serve on the Civil um, Law and Procedure Subcommittee. So we had some just long bills, very important bills to all of you on this call and to all of um, those who live in Maryland. Uh, we're going to see a number of changes. Um, and in the essence of time, I will just mention just a couple bills. One of them, as Chair 
Barnes mentioned was recreational marijuana. And that bill, we had to ensure that our community, um, as he indicated, was having those charges dropped, um, felonies um, turned into misdemeanors. These were long conversations about how the Black community had been impacted you know, by incarceration from marijuana. And so I wanna just thank Chairman Barnes, who I pulled on the floor several times to ensure the minority members of the judiciary could have a cohesive um, conversation and have a message that was on point and everybody was on the same page. And so that's the great thing about having someone in your delegation, on your team, that we are just here for one another. And I said, oh, it, it's getting a little chaotic. We have different jurisdictions, you know, in different places. Let's pull us together. And so he did a great job doing that. Um, and so that bill, I believe now is uh, over in uh, the Senate, on the Senate side with our friends there and making several adjustments. But that bill um, is a critically important bill. And you will see that those two bills are HB1. HB1 will be on the ballot this year for you to vote. If it passes out of the ballot, if it passes with the voters, you all you will see it be um, become state law. And from that, we have HBA 37, which spells out those parameters um, of recreational marijuana and what that would mean in terms of investing in um, minorities, allowing them to participate. There's a fund that set aside for minorities to participate in recreational marijuana um, um, businesses. Uh, there is an opportunity for, as I mentioned, you know, some judicial um, rights. Uh, when I say go from wrong to right, that's what I mean. Not your rights as a person, but those that have been, um, you know, uh, been incarcerated, be able to turn their life around and get out of. Um, cause we have individuals that have been incarcerated that's still there so it's a matter of getting them out I don't want to get too legally on you and, and what that looks like but it's really about redemption so that's what HBA 37 focuses on then we have another bill who you heard President Obama talk about I'm, I keep saying President Obama you guys I've been on several Zooms saying that President Biden they're a team I still have that Biden Obama team President Biden talked about untraceable guns um, ghost guns. He talked about that and how Im critically important that is to getting those guns off the streets and making our communities safe. And so I want to publicly thank our Congressman Anthony Brown, who testified on that bill to talk about the work that they're doing at the federal level to partner with us at the state level to ensure that we are working together to get these guns out of our communities, out of the streets to keep our communities safe. We know that COVID has spiked at crime in all parts of the country, but here in Maryland, on the committee I sit on on judiciary, I've been able to be a part of those conversations. And so thank you, Congressman Brown, for providing testimony and providing your insight and to talk about the work that you have done um, on the federal level. Finally, I just also want to talk about a bill I mentioned that Delegate Charles um, has tasked me with um, working on. You know, in Prince George's County, in District 25, we see tobacco store, 24 seven stores, store after store after store on every single corner. We, we heard you, we hear you, we work for you. Delegate Charles, you know, we both Greek. He gave me an assignment, you all. He's, I had to show him deference. He said, take it and run with it. So I had the great opportunity of testifying before the Economic Matters Committee. I was a little nervous, believe it or not. My first time testifying. Um, but I talked about how our community, more so than any other communities other than Baltimore City in the state of Maryland, has been hit, has seen these stores, a proliferation, a saturation of these stores um, in our community, and how I call that modern day redlining, because you don't see that in any parts of the state. And so we are working on that issue here. It is a huge, huge issue to work on. And so what we have come up with, with the chair of ECM, is working together over the summer with the work group, with the group of in interested, the alcohol, um, it's interested individuals, the Alcohol Tobacco Commission, 
organization and others um, that are part of a statewide sort of um, internal group that's going to look at how we deal with our licenses and other um, retail businesses that are sort of operating under convenience stores, but we know they are selling tobacco and other products, a saturation of proliferation. And it's critically important that we deal with that now as we move toward possibly getting recreational marijuana. We don't want these to be an issue. We don't want this to be an issue in our community um, as Chair Charles indicated, like our liquor stores. So I wanna just thank um, our clerk of the court, um, uh, clerk uh, um, uh, Mahasin who worked with me on that bill, we had several conversations on that. And to look at how her office can ensure um, that we do things to make sure that they're not next to each other um, and that it's not a proliferation of them. We are a team. We're working with all of our partners in Prince George's County, all of our partners on a countywide level to ensure um, that we provide a community that's safe for you and that's a community that you want to, you know, be that you can be proud of. And so um, with that, you know, I will stop there. As you can see, I have been busy hitting the ground running um, here in Annapolis. And I just want to um, have my chief of staff, Philip Quander Mosley, just I did want him to say something, but if you could just raise your hand and let it and let, it, let everyone see you. Um, he's here working for you as well. Thank you so much, Senator Griffith. <laughs> Thank you, delegate. You see why I'm so excited about this team that we have working together in Annapolis. I apologize for having to jump off. It's interesting that Delegate Tolls mentioned the ghost gun bill because that's actually the vote that I just went to cast on the Senate side. As you all know, we talk a lot about the work that we're doing here in Annapolis, but it actually, we do these this great work and then we send it across the hall and ask our, our colleagues across the hall to carry up the mantle and get it done. And then it goes to the governor's desk for signature. Um, I did wanna mention a couple of bills that my team has been helping with. Um, one um, bill that I've been working on for several years is the loan assistance repayment program. Uh, I have had this bill in for several years and we're modifying it and making it better. We are providing support to doctors and physicians assistants and that work in physicians shortage and medically underserved areas. As you all know, we've all gone through COVID together these past couple of years. And I do wanna acknowledge and pause for a moment and acknowledge that this, is not, this has been a difficult time for a lot of folks. And we've gotten through it by working together and with the support of some incredible healthcare professionals that have gone without vacations and without work that could not work remote that went out day after day and provided care for those of us who needed it and for our friends and family members. And so I wanna pause and just salute our healthcare heroes and say how proud I am of the work that they have done on behalf of our communities. And this 25th district team is going to continue to put in legislation and put resources in the budget that support our healthcare professionals wherever they fall on the healthcare continuum. And that, that is something that we have valued and found to be very important. And so that's one of the bills that I put in this session. And Delegate Charles was talking about the uh, tax exemption bills. I actually have a bill moving through budget and tax that will provide an exemption on medical devices. Basically, it's called durable medical equipment, but it really says if you need a, th a thermometer, a pulse oximeter, um, and um, a blood pressure cuff, you should not have to pay taxes when you buy these devices because you're taking responsibility and taking a proactive approach to your own healthcare needs. And so I introduced Senate Bill 488, uh, that is moving through Senate budget and tax along with another pa a package of other um, tax credit bills and tax exemption bills that are being considered by the committee. Once we get them through on the Senate side, we'll hand them over to the House and trust that the colleagues will be able to do the lift and get it done. And hopefully we can get those on the governor's desk for signature. And I didn't mention to you all earlier when I was introducing my phenomenal team, that my intern is actually on the line and she actually presented a bill before the EHE committee yesterday. Um, Gina, if you're here, wave. I think, I don't know which page you're on, but I got a text saying that I missed you all. Uh, Gina introduced a bill. She's a student at University of Maryland College Park, but she presented the Urban Agriculture 
Water and Power Infrastructure Grant Program. We're trying to support farmers and community gardens. How many of you know access to healthy fruits and vegetables is so important? And so we're going to provide resources to make sure that those who are growing and providing access to those things for our community. And so that is a bill, Senate Bill 942, that I put in and uh, got strong assist by Team 220 and Gina, who's a part of that team. I was listing to you all some of the things that budget and tax put in the operating budget or fenced. And I wanted to mention that we put in money for enhanced Alzheimer's research. We put in money for pediatric cancer, for mental health services, which is we talk a lot about the healthcare needs that we all experienced during COVID, but mental health and behavioral health are also priorities that we focused on. We also and um, wanted to make sure that we put money in for investments in our parole and probation system, and just so many other areas to make sure that we're taking care of the comprehensive needs of the community. Now, um, I don't know, uh, Mr. Chairman, did you introduce the other elected officials that joined the Zoom while I was away? Nick uh, recognized them as he, as he spoke. Okay, so if we've missed anybody, please let me know but I do see that we have been joined by a true partner to the 25th district team. He served as a delegate with, uh, with us back from 1999 until he became Lieutenant Governor and now has had a very distinguished career in the United States Congress. We certainly wanna acknowledge and have a few remarks from the congressional member representing District 4, our very own Congressman Anthony Brown. And after we hear from him, we want to hear from our Democratic Central Committee members present. Good afternoon, Congressman Brown. Good evening. Good, good afternoon uh, to uh, uh, President Pro Tem and uh, Senator Melanie Griffith. I just wanted to come by this evening really uh, to say how wonderful, uh, effective, dynamic, uh, that District 25 team is. I've spent a lot of years in Annapolis. I've worked with a lot of senators and delegates uh, and, and district teams. And I can't think of one, and I'm not just biased because I grew up in the 25th district and I was in the House of Delegates in the 25th, but truly honestly say that this District 25 team is, is extraordinary. And they're all leaders. Um, you know, Melanie as really the number two person uh, in the Maryland Senate. Uh, with Delegate Barnes, as, as we all know, chairs the Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland. And as a member of the Congressional Black Caucus and also previously having served in the Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland, I know how influential that caucus can be, particularly when it's unified and united and can speak with one voice. And they've done that more now under Daryl's leadership than I've ever seen uh, in Annapolis. Nick Charles, uh, who uh, early now, I think your second term and already uh, leading the Prince George's County House delegation, uh, which is no easy task. Uh, you got some strong willed uh, and, um, uh, members, uh, all with great ideas, all enthusiastically wanting to represent their constituents. But you know the importance of bringing that group together, again, speaking in one voice on behalf of the county. It's not an easy task. You've done it well. And certainly Karen Tolls, new, the newest member to Annapolis but brings extraordinary experience and valuable experience uh, in county government. Because as so many people have said tonight, uh, we only work well together as elected leaders uh, when we do it at the federal, state, and local level. So Karen brings that unique experience from county government, having represented uh, in county council. Uh, so welcome to the 2015. Um, look, I also just want to acknowledge the important work. You you've heard the members talk about the important legislation uh, that they're passing. They're in it every day. Uh, I'm, in, I'm on Capitol Hill, but I'm watching what they're doing in Annapolis. Uh, I've been in Annapolis testifying on some bills. Very excited about the fact that you're passing the ghost gun uh, ban legislation and, and kudos to the Senate, uh, Melanie, for just voting that out uh, this evening. Uh, you mentioned the reform to our juvenile justice system. I think that's perhaps one of the most humane uh, and fair and just things that are happening this session. We have to treat our children like children, even when they're bad, even when they do bad things. Trying to treat them like adults in a criminal justice system 
That's not the right way to go. I commend you for what you've done to reform the juvenile justice system, lowering families' costs by eliminating sales tax. And we've heard about on the baby products, the diapers, the diabetic supplies. Uh, you've also made childcare more, to for, more affordable. You are focused on families. Now, I don't know if I've heard anyone mention uh, the landmark effort uh, that you all are undertaking uh, when it comes to climate change. We don't talk about that a lot, uh, but the work that you're doing to address climate change uh, and, uh, and our environment, uh, that's important, particularly when you think about environmental justice and how so many decisions okay, about the impacts our environment impact communities of color disproportionately. I'm very excited that you all are focused on climate change and environmental justice. And before I wrap up, let me just say this. We are busy on Capitol Hill. Uh, and we are focused right now on perhaps the, one of the biggest crises that we are experiencing globally, and it's impacting us right here at home, and that's the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We just passed a bill for about $13 billion for humanitarian assistance and military security assistance to Ukraine. And as you probably know, the president of Ukraine uh, um, uh, presented before uh, the United States Congress for the very first time a foreign official presenting via Zoom or virtually, and we heard his plea for more aid. We are going to assist Ukraine and the Ukrainian people because it really is a defense of democracy worldwide. Uh, it's going to be painful for us at home, mostly economically. We are seeing rising prices uh, in energy in particular. I commend the General Assembly for the gas tax holiday. And on Capitol Hill, we are also looking for ways to provide relief for families. We are going to punish Vladimir Putin. The Russian economy is going to suffer. That's not a good thing for anyone, but it right now has proven to be the most effective thing to get Putin to reconsider his actions. He's unhinged. He literally is a madman. No one really today sitting on this call on this Zoom can tell us in what direction or how this is gonna end. But we are focused on that. And that's probably taking up more of our bandwidth than anything else. So I just wanted you to know that we are mindful on Capitol Hill of the global impacts and the impacts here at home of Putin's war and invasion in Ukraine. And we're doing everything we can to reduce the impact on families here in this country. Uh, but I've always said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a straight shooter uh, we, we are going to feel the cost of, of, of his war uh, in Ukraine. Um, let me just finally uh, say this. Um, it's been a privilege to represent you in the 4th Congressional District. And I thank you for giving me that opportunity for the last six years. This is my last year in Congress. I've made a decision. I'm running for Attorney General. I'm not going to speak in detail or even at length about that because that's not the purpose of this call. I'm running for Attorney General to come back to Maryland so I can continue my partnership with District 25 team as we fight for equity and fairness and justice for all Mariners. So I look forward to continue to see you uh, in the community out and about, uh, but this time next year, it'll be in a different capacity. So God bless each and every one of you. And I wish the very best for you and your families. Thank you, Senator Griffith. Thank you, uh, Congressman. Yeah, the Senator had to uh, go back and do some more votes. So I'm gonna take over for right now. Uh, I see we have a uh, school board member, former school board member, Belinda Queen. The Queen is in the house. How are you, ma'am? It's good to see you. Thank you so very much. Sorry being late. I had an interview with Smart Growth, but I'm here now. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. And then I also see uh, Council Member Mel Franklin. I'm going to uh, open up the floor to him. But before I let Mel speak, uh, Council Member Franklin speak, I want to uh, take a point of privilege and introduce my staff since I didn't do that when I was given my uh, my updates. And so who I have on the call right now is I have uh, Becca Rhodes, who is my chief of staff. She started off as an intern and I brought her on as my chief of staff. All right. Then I have uh, Latasha Coleman, who is my uh, the Prince George's County Delegation Legislative Director. I have uh, Mike Johnson, uh, my constituent services rep. Lucian Smith, my business policy advisor, Anthony Tillman uh, on here, who's my constituent services rep as well. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for, for being here. So I appreciate that. 
Uh, Council Member Franklin. Good evening uh, to the District 25 team. Uh, I want to really thank you uh, for all the work you're doing uh, for us uh, uh, now and, and all the great work you've done uh, for us. I want to uh, congratulate, uh, I almost said Council Member Tolls, Delegate uh, Tolls on, on being your newest uh, team member. Uh, it was a pleasure working with her uh, on the County Council and I look forward to our partnership uh, in, in our in our different places now. Uh, but I, I just I just am really here tonight to uh, reaffirm our our partnership between the county council and our local delegations uh, it is really that team Prince George's County mentality that's going to uh, help us recover from the worst pandemic we've had in in, in 100 over 100 years uh, and, and we're really not out of it yet um, we too we, we still have many small and minority owned businesses that are struggling to survive uh, we have a, a lot of residents who are still struggling to get back on their feet uh, who aren't fully back at work uh, so, so the work that you all are doing is vital. Uh, we truly appreciate the gas tax holiday. Uh, we, we truly appreciate everything you're doing on Kerwin and making sure we get full and fair and equitable funding for our young people. Uh, we, we truly appreciate the work you're doing uh, on transportation and, and, and the infrastructure funding. We got to fight for the projects that uh, our county needs, the infrastructure our county needs. Uh, we got to really be uh, especially watchful for all the federal dollars that are coming our way when, when, when you look at the bipartisan infrastructure uh, law that was passed at the federal level. We got to make sure Prince George's County gets its fair share. Uh, I was uh, pleased to see that uh, uh, our, our congressional delegation, and it was great to hear uh, Congressman Brown, they secured $5 million for the Southern uh, Maryland Rapid Transit Project. Uh, and so the state can now match that and get that project moving. Um, we, we see that the state's getting the purple line back on track. Um, we hope to see that project come to fruition. Uh, we, we also see a lot of other uh, road projects uh, that need to move forward. And, and so we do appreciate the help and the partnership. Uh, the, count, the county executive also Brooks has just uh, released her proposed uh, fiscal year 23 budget. Uh, it's got some significant investments in some important priority areas. The council is just starting to review it. Uh, we will have our own priorities and our own issues and things that we're going to be looking at and looking to support. Uh, I am particularly need. I particularly think that uh, our most vulnerable residents continue to need more assistance. Uh, I also believe our small and minority businesses continue to need um, more assistance. So I will be pushing for that hard uh, in this upcoming budget. I also think our infrastructure needs investment, particularly our roads. We have way too many potholes, way too many uh, crumbling um, um, roadways that we need to address. We still don't have a, a level of bus service that we need to truly be uh, adequate for all of our residents and truly be the economic engine that it could be. So we have a lot, a lot to do. I don't want to go on and on. I just want to say thank you for the partnership. I look forward to our continued teamwork. Uh, we, we know and we all love Prince George's County. We want it to, to be the greatest uh, place that we know it can be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, before I give a uh, open it up to uh, Council Member Streeter, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Reverend Gerald Folsom from Hemingway. Uh, he's been a, a, a huge community partner with the District 25 team uh, and the food distribution events that we do to make sure that we look take care of some of our most vulnerable people in the community. So, uh, Pastor Folsom, thank you so much for for your continued support. Uh, we also have Tequila Harris from First Baptist Church of District Heights uh, and the partnership we have with uh, First Baptist Church of District Heights as well uh, and the other food distribution events. You know, collectively with both of these churches, we have touched so many people and because of you guys, you make it very possible. So I want to thank both of you guys and I open up if you want to say a couple of quick words before I open it up to Councilmember Streeter. Just want to say thank you, uh, this is Pastor Folsom. Just want to say thank you. And anything we could do here at Hemingway, we're ready to do. And so whatever you need, just call on us or else we'll be coming to you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Pastor Folsom. And uh, Councilmember Streeter. Thank you. Uh, and it's, it's such a wonderful partnership that I have with the 25th District. I wanna thank you all so much for making it so easy to work with you. Um, you you're very competent, very professional, and you're in leadership and you're in a position to make things happen. And you are doing that. Uh, you really have your hands on the pulse of the community. Uh, and you've reflected tonight uh, many of the priorities that Prince George's County Council has, as well as the County Executive as we've received a new budget and received some information on highlights. I want to particularly uh, 
point out um, the quality of life emphasis that you've had. Uh, I know, um, uh, Nick, you 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 put in a bill on um, on the maintenance of of our roadways and maintenance schedule. Uh, that's critical. It's something that I've been looking forward to um, as our communities uh, deserve to be uh, cleaned uh, on a regular basis. And we could never figure out just when that was going to happen. Uh, and now that you have that legislation and that I hope we'll, we'll make it to the end, uh, it gives us a better shot at knowing how our community is going to be maintained and it restores amazing pride in our community. Uh, the transportation uh, projects that you're doing, they complement that, that whole effort. Um, and, and beautification means more than just picking up trash. You know, it means plantings and mulchings and so forth and restoring pride in the community. So I commend you that for that. Uh, the, uh, the bill by council member tolls on the convenience stores that uh, are tobacco stores, uh, was really critical. I mean, it, it's it's a uh, it's a problem in our community has been for a while, and uh, we've been sort of stuck at the local level on things that we can find as a remedy. And so I, you know, I commend her that she hit the ground running. She knows the District Seven very well, and and she's in tune with some the problems there. Uh, and she was able to just start right away trying to address that concern. And I just look forward to continuing our partnership, working very hard with you um, and, uh, you know, keep up the good work. We got a wonderful team in the 25th and uh, I appreciate all your efforts as does the constituents in District 7. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member. I see our Senator is back. So I'm going to, uh, before we uh, hand it back over to her, hand it over to uh, Dr. Rhonda Wallace. Good evening, good evening, District 25. It's a, it's a privilege to serve you and this great leadership team. Real quickly, being the Democratic Central Committee, my colleagues that, that are not able to join this evening because of their conflict in schedule, that's Kent Robertson, at large member, Reverend John Richardson, Ernest Canales, and Larry Blake, our district coordinator. I also want to please let you know, Every month, the third chooses of the month from seven to nine, we have open sessions with our, our Democratic candidates. It's been going really well. And please know I'm the co-chair for the Young Adults and Outreach, and we're doing outreach to young adults, especially in the high schools and the Bowie State University, Prince George's Community College, et cetera. We're trying to get folks, our young folks, to know the democratic process and also to help with volunteering, et cetera. And I want to also please to let you know it is a great to serve you and to be part of this team. Thank you for the time and thank you for the great work, District 25 team. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Wallace, and thank you, uh, Delegate Charles, Mr. Chairman, for stepping up. I know you're used to running those delegation meetings, so I knew you would just flow right in. Um, to the community, let me apologize again, but the, the work of the Senate and the House is really heating up as we approach crossover. Monday is crossover in the General Assembly, which means houses that are expected to pass both chambers need to have been considered by the 21st. We'll still have bill hearings after that, but for the most part, senators will be hearing House bills after that, and House will be hearing Senate bills. And so as we get closer to that time, there's fewer of us, so they send us a lot of bills. We got a lot of work to do. Um, we are at a point in our program where we wanted to be able to hear if there are questions. And I, I think Congressman Brown, I'm not sure if he's still here. I know he had to vote and you all heard from him earlier, but we wanna certainly give those of you community leaders and those that are engaged, either former or current elected officials, community leaders, you would like to make a statement or have a question that you would like to ask this District 25 team, this would be the time if you want to use your uh, under the reaction tab, if you use your raise hand feature, we'll certainly call on you and certainly um, again want to make sure that you all know that this meeting, this uh, conversation is recorded so we'll be able to capture it on a YouTube channel that I'll ask a member of my team to put in the chat room for those of you that want to capture some of this later. 
So does anyone have any questions or anyone want to be heard that hasn't spoken, any elected officials or team members I have not acknowledged? This would be your moment. All right, Ms. Parker stepped right up. Let's hear from you. Good afternoon and thank you for all of your advocacy. Um, you have the Zoom. Thank you so very much. I'm sorry I'm on a picture. I'm driving my wonderful child to art class. But I wanted to say um, just on behalf of PG Changemakers, a grassroots organization within Prince George's County, uh, founded by Amity Pope and Crystal Orieva, O-R-I-A-D-H-A, we are so proud to continue to partner with all the members of District 35 in regards to specifically moving legislation that will help all the members of our community um, throughout uh, 25 and specifically in municipalities. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that and say thank you and also say that we are available to work with you guys again on things that are specific to our community in District 25, particularly around education um, and criminal justice reform. So thank you so much again. Thank you. Oh, and thank and I'm sorry. And one more thing I did want to say, I would be remiss, right, if I didn't say um, that uh, Crystal Orieva is running for District 7 uh, County Council of Prince George's County. She could not be on the call this evening because she uh, had a previous engagement, but she is definitely running and she appreciates um, just the District 25 and she has remained active and visible within the um, district to ensure that things are happening for our residents. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for that commercial message. I wanted to, um, I do want to welcome. <laughs> I want to acknowledge that you mentioned the arts because I failed to mention when I was talking about the funding that we set aside in the budget, we actually set aside money for tourism and the arts big priorities in addition to healthcare and other things. So thank you for mentioning the arts. We know when our youth are engaged and when we are engaged in arts, sports, entertainment, we're less likely to get involved in other stuff that we don't need to be involved in. So, so kudos for that. Um, I see uh, Belinda Queen. Madam Senator. I'm sorry, was you gonna say something, Karen? I was just, if it's okay, really yeah. quickly. Um, I just wanted to mention um, that I, I don't see him here. He may have to leave for a voting session, but I want to mention that our state's attorney um, did have someone, um, I believe her chief of staff was on at one point. So I did want to make sure that she was mentioned and to highlight the work that she's doing with um, Delegate Daryl Barnes in the area of criminal justice. He's working with her on some legislation to ensure that she received money from the office of, Gov of the office of the governor's uh, crime control and prevention, as well as additional funding to deal with some of the spike in crime that we have dealing with that we have been dealing with in Prince George's. So I will be remiss if I did not mention that um, our state's attorney Brave Boy is a partner with us in District 25 as well. So thank you, uh, Madam uh, former school board member, for allowing me to get that in. Thanks. Thank you. Greetings to everyone, especially to my senator in the D25 team. Um, first, I want to start with some thank yous. Um, thank you guys for being there. Any, well, you know, anytime I reach out to one of you guys, especially um, senators to the delegates or whatever, you guys are readily available to assist and help. And I also want to thank our community partner, Pastor Foster, because um, one of the students at one of my schools, John Bain, passed away and the parent didn't have money to bury the child. And the community reached together and, and of course, the Himalaya just stepped right up um, along with when I reached out to Delegate Barnes, he stepped right up and, you know, GS Proctor in helping and assisting to make sure that the parents, that, that this child get a going home service. And I just want to say continue to thank you guys for being there because it's important that we are a community that we help and assist and take care of people who are in our community. Um, as I, even though I came late, I do apologize. I did have an interview um, with Smart Growth, so I had to do my interview, but of course, I always jump on a call to be a part of D25 whenever you guys are having something. So I don't know if I missed anything in the beginning, but I did hear you guys talk about the potholes and the sidewalks, and I'm really, I'm really hoping that you guys fight to bring more money home to address these issues, because we do have problems with our infrastructure right here in Pennsylvania County, and especially within 25, um, driving on these potholes and streets, and we have to make sure that we are addressing these things so we can have a walkable community. Too many people, including me, are tripping over these sidewalks. So 
So it's important that we invest in it. And someone mentioned the bus service. We got to do better bus service and get shelters. I mean, and not just our bus and give them better services, but demand that Metro also get better services. Because when you drive in DC, you see these beautiful shelters with electronic things going across, but they don't give that service by here in Maryland. So we have to make sure that we're getting these things and especially prioritizing around the Metro. But again, I do want to thank you guys for the service you're doing. I know you are fighting really hard in Annapolis, especially to bring money home for our children, the school system, the make next generation. So I to definitely throw that in. And so I want to say thank you to our senator for all you do. Um, all I know you will continue to do to make sure that not only District 25 um, succeeds and everything we need for our community, but also Prince George's County. But I want to remind you in closing, um, this, let's make sure that we're taking care of our seniors, that they are able to age in place, that we're bringing services back to help our seniors. Too many of our seniors are hurting. They're saying they're hurting now. They're saying they can't afford their houses. We're overtaxing them. Um, we're taxing them the same price as a house that may have been rebuilt, a brand new house. We got to make sure that we're bringing homes and bringing home services and funds to take care of our seniors who have paved the way for so many of us. So thank you so very much. Thank you for those remarks. And um, we, we certainly thank all of our civic and community leaders for all that you're doing because it's the work that you do that we build upon while we're here in Annapolis. I see, um, is it Marja Lindsay Reed? Yes, ma'am, thank you. I love that you pronounced that correctly. Oh. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I am Commissioner Marja Lindsay Reed. I'm a commissioner with the Prince George's County Commission for Individuals with Disabilities. And um, I wanna thank you in advance for all that you do for the citizens of Prince George's who have various disabilities. I've seen a lot of um, information and things being posted about mental health. I am a clinical social worker, so I really appreciate us moving the needle forward. Also any social workers that are on, um, happy social work month. Oh, great, awesome. Um, and I just wanted to, um, remind anyone that is on that uh, we just got off of our commission meeting before we got here. If you are um, able to share with your networks that the Commission for Individual with Disabilities meeting is via Zoom every third Wednesday uh, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, we are listed on um, the Department of Family Services website. So if you don't remember that, you can look there, click. Lydia Williams is our liaison. And uh, we look forward to seeing um, uh, County Executive Angela Alsobrooks on the April 20th uh, meeting to discuss some of our um, concerns. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I don't see any hands, so I'm going to throw in a few announcements on behalf of the team. Then I'm going to check with my fabulous staff and everybody's staff to see if we've missed anything. And then we're going to let you all be able to go and enjoy your afternoon. I wanted to mention, if it hadn't been mentioned already, oh, I got you, Commissioner Irving. I'll call on you just a minute. I um, wanted to mention that each of us have scholarship funding available. We have legislative scholarships available. I believe everybody's announcements are out. If you know anyone who is in need of scholarship funding for the upcoming school year, please reach out. I think all of our application processes are still open. Mine closes April 29th. Uh, we are taking applications online. It's www. Mine is melaniegriffith.org, spelled the same way as my name. So if you would just click on my website, you can get access to that application, or I'll ask a member of my team if they will put an email address in the Zoom that you can reach out to us, and we will make sure to get you an application. Let me let delegates Charles and Tolls, I know you're on, if you want to announce your scholarship funds, and then we'll hear from Commissioner Irving from the City of District Heights. Delegate Charles. Thank you, Madam Senator. Yep, and uh, we will be uh, doing the same thing uh, with our scholarships. Uh, and so what we do is we do an essay contest and uh, we typically choose the uh, a topic, a major topic of discussion for the year. And uh, this year it's about the legalization of marijuana. And so uh, 
that is going to be the topic of discussion when uh, the students are writing their essays uh, for our scholarship application. And uh, we will be releasing our scholarship, uh, opening it up fairly soon. Uh, we just typically wait to after uh, session uh, to get the ball rolling on that. And uh, I have a former, uh, someone who helped out, uh, Commissioner Katrina Dixon Patterson. She was on my scholarship committee uh, last year. So uh, I know she's ready to get ready to be a part of this again uh, next, this, this coming year. So uh, we'll be sending that out to everyone. And uh, thank you. And if you check in the uh, chat box, you'll see my email address if you want thank to request you, Delegate, an application. Delegate Charles, now I didn't introduce Miss Aretha Bridgewater Sims, C Cassandra Burkhalter, Beatrice. I'm do that. <laughs> several other, as a matter of fact, Karen Tolles was also on my scholarship committee. <laughs> Folks, if you have not been engaged in this process, reach out to us because eyes and hands are helpful as we go through those applications. Delegate Tolles, tell them about your scholarship. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. I was on the scholarship committee for Senator uh, Griffith. Um, and so I too have a scholarship that I'm very excited about. Um, and our scholarship closed on April 29th as well. And so please email my chief of staff, fellow Quander Mosley, um, wave again for the team here. If uh, you reach out to him and you put... Um, you know, your, your, let me back up. He's going to put my information in the chat box, my email. So please email him and he will direct you on how to apply um, for a scholarship. And so I just, um, you know, I'm very excited that this is my first time doing that. I was also going to mention um, Aretha Bridgewater Sams, who is a dynamic community partner, Madam President Pro Tem, I may have to, uh, you know, lean on my sorority sister and link sister to come over and help me, help the newbie here get situated. Um, and I know Gloria Lala will be happy to help me who gave scholarships as well during her time as Senator. And so please reach out to my office so that we can, um, you know, tell you how to apply. And I will also add in closing, I was a former recipient of a scholarship when I was in high school. So this is very personal for me to ensure that I can pay this forward. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I know there's someone from Delegate Barnes office on, is there someone from Delegate Barnes team who wants to either announce his scholarship or put something in the chat room for those who are here? Hi, good evening, Denise Tyler, Chief of Staff for Delegate Darrell Bonds. Um, I put it in the, the chat already, um, but the scholarship application is open until May the 15th. Um, you can go to darrellbonds.net and the application is online. Excellent, thank you. Thank you all. And we're gonna have a couple of um, more announcements as we prepare to wrap up, but Commissioner Irving from the City of District Heights, it's good to see you. Likewise, likewise. I uh, wanted to thank you all for addressing the convenience stores. The liquor okay, stores. So okay. What I was saying is I wanted to thank you all for addressing the issues of the convenience stores, the liquor stores and the tobacco stores. They seem to be disproportionately placed in certain areas. So like Capitol Heights, District Heights, we have an abundance of them and still getting more. And the thing that disturbs me most is that as municipalities, it would appear to me that we should be able to have some say into what comes in our neighborhood. We know they have to have a permit and they don't get the permit from us. So I guess they get it from the county. And then we look up and they're here. So I appreciate you all addressing that and hope that you keep in mind that they're kind of disproportionately pl placed or located, in my opinion, especially in areas inside the Beltway. So I just wanted to put that out there and thank you all for looking into it and addressing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those remarks and for your support. I don't see any additional hands raised. I don't know if they were acknowledged earlier, but there was a Kenneth Simmons who was here representing Congressman uh, uh, Van Hollen, certainly wanted to acknowledge his office reached out. They're busy working on Capitol Hill on our behalf. We couldn't do what we do without our federal partners. So certainly wanna thank 
all of those who represent us in District 25 and across the state of Maryland. Um, we are going to, uh, we have some comments and questions that um, are in the chat room. My, my team is gonna go through and pull uh, some of those questions that require follow-up. What I will say to you, those of you that are here that represent groups and organizations, please reach out to the District 25 team. If you're having issues, we may not know unless you tell us. Please don't assume that we know the issues that are burdening the community. Um, if we haven't heard from you, we, we are not likely to respond to the specific needs. So help us be helpful to our community by letting us know uh, what, what you need and how we can be helpful. We did not talk about nonprofits. I don't know if anybody spoke about that, but throughout the year, we are working to support our nonprofits. So if you are representing a nonprofit or doing work in our community in a nonprofit that is either in a facility and looking for capital support or just want to make people aware of the services you provide, please also reach out to our offices and make us aware of what we can do to support you and to get your services out to the community members who may need them. Uh, colleagues, have I missed anything? Staff, team members, for anybody, have we, we covered all that we should cover for this 2022 District 25 virtual night in Annapolis? Um, Madam Senator, can I add one thing? Please. Thank you. Many of you all have may receive my may have received my first newsletter. And so again, I want to thank Philip for putting that together. If you have not, please um, email me or you can go on the Maryland General Assembly website and really under all of our profiles, you can click to sign up for our newsletter where you can receive information. So if you have not done that, I welcome you to sign up for any um, of our newsletters from the senator on down to my colleagues, um, Nick Charles and, and Daryl Barnes. So just wanted to indicate that people can sign up if they have not already done so for our newsletters. All right, any parting remarks, Delegate Charles? No pardon remarks. Uh, outside of uh, Parker, I just saw your text. Yes, she, she was also a part of my uh, scholarship committee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, she was. And once uh, you start but, naming names, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Now Parker knows that she, she's my go-to on a lot of things. So I appreciate her. But now I thank everybody that's that's on the call. I thank you all for being here tonight, uh, Mr. Redman uh, and, and Ms. Redman. You guys show up every single time, and I appreciate that. Uh, those are some of my good Forestville folks, so I'd like to thank everyone for showing up and uh, and being here with us today. And I uh, guess we can take it off after this. Yeah, let me just say that Chair Barnes had to jump off. He has another meeting, um, um, but we certainly thank him for his service. And to say to all of you, the 25th District team has virtual information sessions throughout the year. We have a series called Let's Talk. We have done sessions on wills, estates, and trust, healthy eating on a budget. We've done um, sessions with Employee Prince George's on helping you or your family members get jobs. All of these programs, and I forgot one, but all of these programs are available on the YouTube channel that was placed in the chat. If you have a subject that you would like us to focus on, that you would like more information on, please reach out and let us know. We are trying to get the experts in to make sure that you have the information you need. We thank you all so much for taking a part of your day to spend with District 25. On behalf of Chairman Daryl Barnes, Chairman Nick Charles, and Delegate Karen Tolles, our phenomenal Central Committee members who the chair of the Central Committee, Kent Robeson, Dr. Rhonda Wallace, Central Committee, Reverend John Richardson, Central Committee, and Ernest Canlis, Central Committee. We thank you for being a part of our work in the community. Again, to all our elected officials at every level of government and all of our community leaders, it takes all of us working together to get the job done. Thank you so much for being a part of our important work. Let's keep working together. God bless you all and have a great evening. <laughs>